Okay, I uh, made another video on how to install uh, WAMP server, but the, the sound didn't work, so I'll have to do it over again. Anyways, to install WAMP server, you have to be on Windows. I'm using Windows 8. And then you go to, this isn't supposed to be here. Anyways, you go to, go into Google or whatever search engine you want and type in Apache HTTPD. And click download. And go to the one that says Win32 binaries. So go there. Uh, you don't need SSL. If you want SSL, download this one. And anyways, you save the file. And I've already got it saved. So you just go to this and click next. Uh, read through this stuff if you want. And next, next. I use localhost. You can use whatever you want. Uh, I will use my real email address. Now, if you only want it for you, use port 880. Um, I just use this by default. Um, I always choose custom. And that looks fine. Install. Uh, UAC control. You can disable that in the control panel if you want. And wait for it to install. finish and you should get this thing right here if you're running something on port 80 it might not work anyways just type in localhost uh, try index.html it works so I uh, it should do, do this default by localhost but uh, I made some changes last time I tried to make a video so um, I'll show you that right now. Uh, anyways, you go to C. It might be program files x86 if you're running on a different machine. Um, Apache config httpd.config is a major file. Uh, well, we got to open. Let's open this. Is a, let's open a new window. And we'll start Notepad plus plus. You have to install this. If it's not a default program. So run as administrator. Yes. Okay. Here's httpd.config. Let's get rid of this index.php here. Save that. Restart the server. Stop. And UAC again. Okay, it stopped. Good. Start. Good. It started. Now let's try. There we go. It's good. You can also use the real IP address. And it should work. Um, what this does is takes the that name and it converts it to this. So this is actually the real name. But we won't worry about that anyways. Next thing you need to do is download MySQL. So go to MySQL download. And um, click MySQL downloads. You can download them all. You really only need MySQL community server. And you choose the one for your machine. Like This machine is an x64. But um, uh, so you choose your platform. This is uh, Microsoft Windows. Yeah, you want the MSI or EXE. You don't want. Um, 
So this one's good. So download that. So click download. And it wants you to register, but you don't have to. No thanks. Just start my download. And I'll come up with this. And it's an Windows X64, which is the wrong one for me. So you have to go back. But I've already downloaded the right one. So grab it. Next. Accept. Uh, you better read it. You're signing a life again. Anyway, it's custom. And that looks all good. UAC again. Anyways, when this gets done, and it's going to ask me to configure after this. So next, next. Uh, that launch the configuration version. If you don't do that, you can't use it. If I remember correctly. Anyways, next. Detailed. You're de this is a developer machine. If you're going to have other people come on to it, then it's a server. And if it's only used for MySQL, use that one. Um, this changes what you can do. Uh, that's fine. How many people are going to be using your site? Um, if you know this um, more than 20 then you want this one and this one you can actually change how many people anyways uh, I always add the firewall exception um, strict mode just makes it easier to work on other databases uh, if you want just ASCII this is fine um, if you want more other languages then choose the other ones uh, install as Windows binary this is kinda important if you want to open it from the command line And I don't want a password on here, although you do want it if you're actually going to make an account. Like, if you put a password in here, I can show you what you have to do. Anyways, next, execute. Okay, it worked. Now, let's go check to see what worked. Now, Windows 8, you just hover over here, and then you get a search button. Type command. And then just type in my SQL and it works but if you use the security you have to use dot u and then root and then dot p now you can type your password here or if you leave it blank it will like there's a space here but if you actually want to type your password you could type password here not this way or you can leave it blank and it will ask you for the password which will work because it doesn't have a password. Anyways, my SQL now works. Now, the next thing you need for WAMP is PHP. So go to PHP downloads. Anyways, you want the current stable, you want Windows binary. So Anyways, these are VC9, they won't work with Apache. They only work with IIS. So you have to grab a V6 version. So a V6 version, x86, say this one, and it comes up. I've already downloaded it. So it's the V9, just to show you what a V9 looks like. It'll come up, and you have to accept it. And that's fine. But you see IAS fast CGI or other. That's not what we want. So open the V6. Uh, accept. Uh, that's fine. Now you, the, I installed Apache 2.2, but whatever server you have. Um, you have to find the Apache config file. Now it might not be in program files, it might be in program files at x86 if you're using a 64 machine. There's Apache config and that's all it needs. Good. Now script executables, I've never actually got this to work. Uh, these are manuals, I want the manuals. Anyways, choose the extensions. 
Um, you might have to install other things to get them to work. But we we did install MySQL already, so uh, that's fine. MySQL improved is good. I don't need OSL. PDO is for other databases. Actually, I'll, I won't click it now. Uh, I do want SOAP, which is a web service provider. And uh, RPC is also another one. And I'll use it. Okay, good. Install. UAC again. All right, PHP is installed. Let's go into the Apache. So it's in programs Apache. So go to HDDocs, and there's still an index of PHP. Anyways, you can't open it like that. You have to go in the web browser and type in slash index.php, and we have to restart the web server. So. Restart. Okay, if it fails, there you have to debug it. And the the way you do that is go to start command. Uh, CD. Go into the Apache file. And it has an error on line 500 of the config file. So you, you see what that is. So you just go into config and type this in. Uh, you have to open something with uh, administrator privileges to work in. Unless you're already the administrator, in which case you don't have to. Anyways, you go to, it said, 500 so control G 500 and PHP endure so go back to PHP and grab this and throw this in here and this in here good now start it up Good. Now let's go to this. Uh, this is PHP info. It's very dangerous to let other people use it. But there it is right there. And now you can change the order. So we'll open HTTP config. Let's do this. Reload. There we go. It doesn't let you refresh. Okay. Just to show what this controls. We can make a new file. So let's go to here. Let's call it, uh, let's start to call it goofy. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so let's go into H, let's change it. Uh, good. Anyways, let's go here, reload. Now, do you know why that's not doing that? It's because we didn't reset the server. Start. Good. Reload. Goofy page. Well, that, that's fine. Now, what happens if we delete Goofy page? So let's get rid of it. Gone. Reload. Now, Goofy is gone. So look for Goofy. Didn't find it and found this. If we delete this one, we'll go with that. All right, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.